Remember back in the old days with CRT monitors? ViewSonic held the market at that time, but they're looking to get back in the fight with a new monitor lineup, including this 4K panel. But as they held the crown in the past, they're now getting back in the market, which is already dominated by large name brands with great displays. So will they be able to compete with this 32 inch ViewSonic VX3211 4K? That is what we will be seeing today and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and subscribe and bell, all that good stuff. On to some honest testing and opinions. And if you find a great deal on a 4K screen, leave your comments down below. Let's get to it. The new FSP Hydro Pro G is reliable even in harsh environments. A compact, fully modular 80 plus gold supply with dual ATX 8 pin, eco switch, 10 year warranty, and it's perfect for your next build. Check it out at the link below. So, this here 32 inch ViewSonic VX 3211 4K is a good 60 Hz 8 bit plus high FRC monitor capable of 10 bit colors with FreeSync, good upscaling, 300 Kandala, and the ability to accept HDR10 input. Motion blur is minimal on this VA panel, and NTSC has 95% coverage. And for photo and video work, a tiny bit of color calibration may be needed out of the box. Construction is good, and the stand is rock solid with the monitor sitting an inch lower than most, and it has speakers with some decent power, but small speakers, so no low end. There's a long eight and a half second source switch delay, and the button controls as well as the menu aren't that easy to use. If you're trying to fit a 32 inch in somewhere, this is your best shot, or if you're using it for a single source like PC or console, it should work pretty well for you. Now I've been daily driving a 1440p 144Hz display until just recently when I started trying out 4K options as we evolve our own workflow and screen captures for 4K recording. Quick tip for creators, having a 4K set to your primary monitor when booting Windows affects how text scales in programs like Premiere. So this ViewSonic VX3211 4K comes in about 450 bucks in the US and is a 31.5 inch VA type panel at 60Hz with four milliseconds response greater gray. The 8-bit plus high FRC replicates 10-bit color, and we'll talk about this tech in a bit, and with 300 Candela and 3001 contrast at 46 watts power, it comes in more efficient than other 32-inch 4Ks in this range, so you'll save a bit on the old power bill. With a quoted 95% NTSC color range, on PC we had to first go into our NVIDIA control panel and change it to use NVIDIA color settings and change the output dynamic range from limited to full to get deep blacks, and why the hell is limited range the default? Ugh, NVIDIA. With that out of the way, both colors and blacks look pretty good on the ViewSonic VX3211 4K. With 178 degree viewing angles, as you get further off center, it's got the typical contrast and saturation shift, and there's AMD FreeSync to ensure that no frames tear in game, and we couldn't determine any excessive input lag while gaming. Backlight bleed is a slight bit more than normal for a non-OLED panel, with a little bit more coming out of the four screen corners, but nothing too dramatic here, and with the picture displayed, we don't feel it's very noticeable. We saw a tiny bit of ghosting, which was better than typical for a VA panel and 60 Hertz response time. Following the market trend of 4K panels with centimeter wide front bezels, the connecting rear shroud overlaps, adding four millimeters on the outside. And with one millimeter black screen inside, true pixel to air is 15 mils. Perhaps a missed opportunity here to make this ViewSonic VX3211 4K stand out in a crowd with a zero frame bezel, though a design update would have likely made this panel more expensive. At least one thing done well here is the stability of this low sitting monitor. The wide base and lower center of gravity make this super stable. The flat forks of the stand claim a bit of desk space though. With no height adjust, swivel or rotate though, the minus five to 13 degree tilt is your only option for adjustment. Dual 2.5 watt speakers give you sound out of the box, so that's useful. And with speakers and volume at 100%, we tested with music where we were getting 75 decibels minimum from a half meter distance, 85 decibels during uh, harmonizing vocals with an average around 80 decibels. Though the tiny speakers deliver hardly any bass at all. And of course the speakers will likely get drowned out a bit in a noisy environment. And with a headphone holder included, you don't see this panel cheaping out on inputs like the Samsung 4K we just checked out, uh, link up here for that review. The panel did 4K 60Hz over DisplayPort as well as both HDMI 2.0 inputs with no sweat. Speaking of cutting corners, the ViewSonic VX3211 ships with a standard power cable and HDMI 2.0, though disappointingly, no DisplayPort cable. Now most consumers are probably just gonna use one monitor for PC, console gaming, or both. However, if you want to hook up two sources, you'll need two cables. And if you are upgrading, you might want to use your older monitor as a second display. 
with most new graphics cards having just one HDMI out, including a DisplayPort cable in the box would serve dual duty, connecting two monitors to your PC or hooking up a console and computer. On the back at the top, there's a standard 100 mil VESA mount, and control is done with six right side buttons. What? Entering the market in 2015 or before, five-way joysticks have been around for years. So let me tell you, using six buttons to control the monitor isn't as easy as it could be. And the spacing just fits medium hands, but is spaced too small if you have slightly larger jazz hands. We'll step through the menu a bit here, and we'll take note of color adjust with six axis color and RGB YUV color space, full range and a quite wide gamma from 1.8 to 2.6, along with HDR10 auto or off. Response time can change from standard, advanced to ultra fast, 14 languages above the FreeSync on off toggle, reassignable shortcut key, which is useful, and OSD size, which we set to large immediately as normal as the smallest dang menu we've ever seen. Below eco mode next screen, I'll take issue with two items, DisplayPort 1.1 on and off and memory recall. For our smart audience, we know that only DisplayPort 1.2 can do 4K 60Hz, but for the general consumer, enabling this will actually cause issues, cutting input down to 30Hz. ViewSonic, it would be better to write this as DisplayPort type, and the switch should be 1.1 or 1.2, as bigger values are generally better, and memory recall would be better defined as reset all or restore defaults, much clearer and standard terminology for the function. Another tip, we found that you can cut down the auto off time from a lengthy 25 seconds down to just 11 by turning off auto source select in the menu, which takes the same time when physically disconnecting cables from the monitor as well. Though this is an 8-bit panel, it can display 10-bit color by using high FRC or frame rate control. So this replicates 10-bit color by using two adjacent colors to the desired value and then rapidly swapping them to create the needed color. With fast refresh rates, flickering from FRC won't be visible in most cases, but would be a bit noticeable in darker areas with blacks and grays, though we haven't seen any so far. We also tried out HDR using PS4 Pro Netflix as it was reliable and repeatable, and watching the Coastal Seas episode of Our Planet, the blue ocean and sunbeams, and especially yellow fish, had more pop to the colors versus the SDR version, one of our better HDR experiences in the studio so far. For Windows 10, HDR is still a mixed bag and lots of fiddling is required, more than we have time for. Please take a moment to like this video, and if you like what you see, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. So the ViewSonic VX3211 4K has pretty decent color and brightness, and the picture is sharp and usable, and we tested it with PS4 Pro, and it looked good there also, and HDR showed some nice color and highlight differences, and it should work fine with PS5 and Xbox Series X. Uh, note, I don't think HDR is actually on right now, but that's okay. Anyway, it's got a great construction with no wobble with the flat leg uh, stand making it sit low. And if you want to VESA mount it, you should get a taller stand as the mount is located at the top. The lower sitting monitor isn't an issue for us, but if you use the space under and behind your monitor a bit, you may need a mount. Overall, for 450 bucks, it's okay, but we have some issues to address. First, the controls and menu. And the buttons aren't easy to use, and the spacing is a couple of millimeters too close for large hands. Now we're being a bit harder on these controls than the similarly spaced Acer buttons as the ViewSonic doesn't have a fairly common 5-way joystick for easy navigation. If you're the set it and forget it type using just one source, this won't be an issue for you. But if you switch inputs or adjust viewing modes frequently, a 5-way control would have made this a breeze. The mixed horizontal and vertical menu isn't the easiest with vertical buttons. They should have made a full vertical style menu in this case, though the functions change from left to right to up to down as you use it. Also, the default menu size is way too small, and forget getting around the menu quickly, as rapid key presses aren't registered. And the monitor inputs are spaced a bit too close on the back, making disconnecting DisplayPort cables harder than it needs to be. Now, we did see a couple of Amazon consumer reported wake-up issues, but we didn't have any connectivity issues so far in our testing. However, switching inputs, that slow 8.5 second source switch may cause issues, especially if you have a source that goes back to sleep if the monitor doesn't connect right away. And without a picture on the monitor, it's pretty unresponsive if you're trying to access the menu to change sources, and is a little bit too quick to go into standby mode. In normal usage, booting up Windows 10 using DisplayPort, there's under a 5 second on to picture time, which is pretty good. But if you're using the power button for off and on, there's no way to turn off ViewSonic splash screen. As for other reports, the matte coating is standard and comparable to other monitors at this price range, so no issues here. 
and the colors also hit the standard mark. If you're trying HDR on PC, that's good for you, but Windows 10 washes out colors and it can be very problematic getting everything working and this has nothing to do with this monitor. For a sanity check, using a PS4 Pro doing 4K, HDR looked pretty darn good. If you are reusing cables, don't forget that an HDMI 2.0 cable is required for our 4K, 60Hz and HDR. HDMI 1.4 will only do 30Hz and will not support HDR. Performing well with consoles is important, and there was no issues with the PS4 Pro. And for PC gaming, this ViewSonic VX3211 4K is a decent choice and the experience was fun and without issues. If you're a gamer looking for fast 144 or 240Hz refresh rates, you should be looking at a fast 1440p screen anyways. We'll also throw a link up here for a different option, which is the Acer 32-inch 4K we just reviewed. That model has color space options, a five-way joystick with a nice menu, a clean startup, a bit more low end to the speakers, HDR support, and comes in at the same price too. And if you click through our, our affiliate links, it helps support us here with no extra cost to you. And don't forget to give us a quick follow on social media. We're at Techspin Review on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And future updates on the ViewSonic VX3211 4K usage or any issues we find over time will be added to our TechspinReview.com post. And check that out for more episodes. Thanks again to FSP and their power supplies for being our sponsor this episode. So what features are you looking for in a 4K monitor? Join the discussion down below. And we're interested to hear what hardware you want to see reviewed. Let us know in the comments. If you like this video, then slam that thumbs up button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, then please do subscribe for new content and click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We reply to comments, so if you have a question or if we miss something, then please tell us down below. We really appreciate you watching this far. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you on the next. Bye for now.